17-year-old high school student Marissa Adkins lives in the small city of Peoria, Illinois, and has a passion for cheerleading. I joined cheerleading because I wanted to try something new and I thought it'd be fun. And I did actually make a lot of new friends and it was just a good experience. Marissa recently got her driver's license and is spreading her wings. I'm close with just a few people and mainly I just drive around with them and listen to music. But she always makes time for her family, especially her mother, Deb. Marissa and I have the same sense of humor. She makes me laugh. We go riding around in the car and she sings and I make fun of her and that's just our thing that we do. Marissa is also close with her grandmother, Marcia. Marissa is a very happy, lucky girl. She is very outgoing and funny. She's just a funny girl. But Marissa's fledgling independence will soon take a dark turn. It's the summer after her junior year. Marissa is visiting her grandmother in nearby Astoria, Illinois. But one morning during her stay, she wakes up not feeling quite right. My right eye was just puffy and red, and it itched, and it hurt a lot. I wasn't really worried at that point. I just thought, you know, this happens. Still, Marissa tells her grandmother about her symptoms. She didn't really complain to me too much. We thought, well, maybe it's allergies. Marissa returns to her mom's house in Peoria. But three days later, things take a turn for the worse. She came to my bedroom at 2 in the morning. She was crying, and she, like, crawled in bed with me and said, Mom, there feels like something sticking me in the eye. I don't usually cry when I'm in pain, but that was so painful that it did bring me to tears. I said, well, let's go to the emergency room. Deb helps Marissa to the car, and they rush to the hospital. The doctor pretty much looked at her, didn't really ask a lot of questions. And then he said he thought that she had the ocular herpes. I had never heard of eye herpes, and it didn't make sense to me at all that I would get it. Ocular herpes is a viral infection of the eye that can cause inflammation and scarring of the cornea. I was going to get a shot to clear this up. It was a very painful shot that I was actually shaking after. But the next day, she realizes that she will have to miss an important stunt clinic for her cheerleading team. I felt really frustrated that I couldn't be there to join them. My eye was starting to get in the way of a lot of things. What should have been a fun time was not a fun time for her. Deb makes Marissa an appointment at a local eye doctor. But when it comes time, Marissa's eye is feeling slightly better, so she begs her mother to let her drive herself to the doctor's office. I felt like driving myself around was a form of freedom, and I didn't want that to be taken. I did not feel that there was a concern at that point. I was hoping that everything was fine. Marissa hops in her car and makes her way to the appointment. While I was driving, I started noticing that the sun was bothering my eye. It was very light sensitive. It was blinding. Kind of had to cover it to stop it from hurting me. Still, the teenager manages to reach the doctor's office, but the appointment does not go as she had hoped. The eye doctor looked in my eye with the light, and she was very concerned at that point because she couldn't figure it out. She mentioned that this could be a more serious infection. The doctor insists she see a cornea specialist in Iowa City as soon as possible. That was really shocking to me because I just wanted to know what was going on. Then something else dawns on her. I was really upset that I knew I could no longer drive for myself. Marissa must rely on her mother. She's like, Mom, you need to come out here. We have to see a cornea specialist. At that point, I was like, 
shaking because I'm like, what is going on? 17-year-old Marissa Atkins has a problem with her right eye. When doctors sent her to a cornea specialist in another state, she realizes the problem is worse than she had imagined. Marissa, her mother, and grandmother make the 160-mile trip to Iowa City. There, ophthalmologist Dr. Mark Greiner takes on her case. As a cornea specialist, of course, I'm very cognizant of severe infections, and I was on the lookout for something like this. Dr. Greiner examines Marissa's eye through a slit lamp microscope and picks up on something odd. He notices a series of circular scars on the cornea that are characteristic of a rare parasitic infection. I was able to give her a diagnosis definitively of acanthamoeba keratitis. She's got a parasite in her eye. I had never heard of such a thing. Acanthamoeba keratitis is caused by a parasite called acanthamoeba. Inside Marissa's right eye, the parasites are feeding off the naturally occurring bacterial colonies in the area above the lens. But when the parasites exhaust this food source, they start feeding on the cells of the eye itself. This causes the circular scarring and tissue damage in her eye, resulting in Marissa's eye pain, impaired vision, and extreme sensitivity to light. He told us this is a very serious eye disease, and she could lose her eyesight. And that's when I started getting really scared, and I just broke down. Marissa just started bawling. And I talked to her and told her that we would get through it. The acanthamoeba parasite can infect a wide range of human organs, including the liver and the brain, but it most commonly infects the eyes. The condition is often treatable, but in some cases, the infection can lead to blindness or even the loss of the eyeball itself. Marissa must brace herself for the prognosis. He told me I could go completely blind, I could lose my eye. She was in for a rocky course. To save her eyesight, Dr. Greiner puts her on a four-month-long course of antiparasitic drugs. I ordered really potent topical medications to be administered every hour on the hour, not even allowing her to sleep at night is what I instructed. At home, she begins the regimen. When Marissa first put the eye drops in, she told me that it felt like there was hot sauce being poured in her eye. The first three days was miserable. We just all had to help her because she just couldn't do it herself. I didn't sleep. My family didn't sleep. It was probably the worst three days of my life. This should never happen to any teenager. For the rest of the summer, Marissa endures the agonizing treatment. I had a comforter covering my window so no light would get in at all. I'd basically lay in my bed. I'd use a blanket to cover half of my face, and it was just really depressing. Marissa withdrew from everybody. She never called anybody, never talked to anybody. She wouldn't even hardly talk to me. It was a helpless situation. And as a parent, when you can't help your child, you just feel horrible. But how did Marissa contract such a horrific infection? Acanthamoeba live in freshwater sources across the world and can even be found in some city water systems. In the United States, the most common way that people contract this parasitic infection is by wearing contact lenses that have been cleaned with tap water. And Marissa often wore contact lenses. I had no idea that water wasn't supposed to come in contact with your contacts. I would rinse them off. They were bothering me during the day. It's really frustrating. I wish I would have known because I think it would have 
save me from this. But after four months of treatment, Marissa's prognosis is still not good. This disease was smoldering and would not be cured medically. She would need a cornea transplant soon. She said, Mom, I'm going to have to have that transplant. I cannot see. I only see shadow. At that point, I knew it's time to do it. Marissa Atkins is suffering from a painful parasitic eye infection that is threatening to rob her of her right eye. After months of failed treatments, Marissa has no other choice but to undergo a cornea transplant. Doctors wheel Marissa into the OR for the delicate procedure. A cornea transplant is a procedure by which we cut out diseased tissue and sew in tissue from a donor. What a surgeon does is uses a circular blade to cut a hole in the front part of the eye. Once the eye is stabilized, we go ahead and sew on the new corneal tissue, typically with anywhere from 16 to 24 stitches. The team completes the surgical implant and wheels Marissa to the recovery room. The results of the surgery are immediately apparent. She's hanging out with her friends. She's going to movies. She can go outside. She can go swimming. That transplant brought my Marissa back. She'll just be on eye drops forever, but at least she can see now. And she's not in pain, so that's a relief. Today, Marissa is mostly back to her old self. Her infection is gone, but the parasites have left their mark. About a third of the time, patients that require one transplant will require an additional transplant. She will probably need another transplant in five to 10 years. But for now, Marissa is looking to the future. I plan on starting college and studying to become a kindergarten teacher. It's been one of the hardest years of my life, but I've grown a lot from it, and I feel like I'm a much stronger person today because I went through that.